see that or not, but uh, yeah. There we go. Somebody's running traps on this trail. It's kind of cool. Through the back, I can show you that. Skied through here quite a bit. First time I've been through here on the machine, though, so. So nice. I saw a great big owl just back there, too. Like, I thought it was a bald eagle at first. It was like that size of wingspan on it, so. I have to ask one of my bird buddies about that that knows a lot more about it than I do. Well, onward and upward. Well, here we are in a winter wonderland. So we got Banting Lake down here and then Walsh Lake just beyond that. Somebody's car. Pretty good view from up here. I think this might be Berry Hill. It's the first time I've been up it. Yeah, machine's running a little rougher than usual. I don't think it likes warm temperatures, and neither do I. Getting all hot and sweaty here. Here's some ravens. So I'm gonna go woo, stay on the running boards here. Back down the hill here, get out onto Banting, go up to the north end of Banting, and there's a trail there that I've seen once that I won't go poke around on now that there's fresh snow. Uh, Hopefully be a little less confused by everybody's tracks that way. It's called Loop Loop, so I'll go take a look. Well, it was going to be a nice little quiet segment here, but helicopters, uh, what's that? <laughs> so, this is why I like poking around exploring. I have no idea where I'm at, but I do have an idea roughly where I'm at. My location, I wouldn't be able to pinpoint it, but I'd know how to get back and how to describe how to get here. And I saw this hiding up over the top. I did just come out on this lake and I was getting ready. Uh, there's some weather coming in, it looks like. I was getting ready to uh, head back before I kind of lost my bearings. But let me see this. This is the Ore Lake Hilton. <laughs> We look up top here, the uh, the roof is all sheeted in. Let's see if we can see on the inside here. Yeah, there's a better view. These boards up top, they're what your core samples would go in from drilling. And check this out. Could even look that up. It's pretty sweet. It says welcome, so I'll take the word for it some light on the scene here. How neat is that, huh? Uh, the only thing I hate about wearing all this kit is it's hard to get at everything. Well, let's just see how the camera does. Make sure there's nothing in here that wants to eat us. No booby traps or nothing. Looks like a party cabin to me. And there's all kinds of stuff on there from squirrels. Cool. We'll go take a look through the windows. A little hard to see. I was planning on starting a fire up anyway, so maybe I'll get some of these layers off and take a look. Yeah, the roof's all sheeted in. I'll bet you this is probably. I'm going to take a wild guess and say anywhere from the 30s to. Watch I don't fall down any holes here too. 30s to the 50s maybe? Oh boy, look at that.
I am going to go get my shotgun. See you in a minute. Okay, so we don't need to get too graphic, but there's where the bird was. And there's where the bird is. And here I am. So yeah, guess what's for lunch? Some spruce gross. And I'll probably make some, some bush tea here too. Either some spruce tea or... I don't see any Labrador tea around here. On the way back out there was a, a bunch, but I'm not that worried about it. So yeah, I'll get this thing cleaned up and get a fire going. Get some tucker in us. Right, well, we're back. Got our bird. Oh, that did that. I might as well take the flashlight here and poke around. I don't know if I should really breathe in here. Prospectors, cabin, welcome. decipher on the rest of it there. Lots of places for Robert Carroll. It's here in April of 97. Hmm. Definitely has that smell of rodent about it. Many people like their alcoholic beverages. So here's what Prospector's Cabin's like apparently. Got some stoves and some tools here. Chair, some bunks across the back. Also we got pots and pans. Yeah, there's a little bit of firewood. A tea kettle. Got a bench. Some more bunks up here. You can see the roof a bit. A tiny little propane lantern. Medicine cabinet. Oh, there's a uh, Matic or something. <laughs> In Touch magazine. I guess they got lots of kindling. Wow, this is good to know about. If I ever get stuck out this way, at least you know one place you can get to. Oh, that's not a warm bag at all. Four degrees. I'd call that a summer bag. But not a bad job in here for the most part. Like as far as original construction goes. I'd be tickled to have something like this. Genuine. Doesn't say. Some kind of board or something. I don't know if that's for flushing or if that's for something for prospecting. But somebody out there will know. So interesting. It's got a high roof but low walls. My nose is about level with the uh, the top edge of the wall here. I guess it's easier to build that way. I dare say she's probably squatted down a bit too. But yeah, the windows are below our armpit level. Pretty cool. Of course, everyone has to leave the mark on it. But if a fella needed to get out of the storm here. Uh, I would dare say this is definitely not anything resembling an airtight stove at all, but it's cool. And a lot of these things that look like newspapers here, I think this is actually uh, what they would print newspapers on. Forget what they're called. Somebody out there will know that as well. Actually, I'll bet you Lonnie at uh, Far North Bushcraft and Survival, which you definitely need to check out his channel, he'd probably know what those are called. He knows how it's done. He's been up in Alaska for a long time. Oh, spider webs. Hang on. There we go. Try not to disturb too much stuff here and breathe anything in. I don't want to breathe in. Uh, we got a nice chisel. A bunch of tea lights. Buck saw. Good, good, good. It's actually got a plank floor too, which is pretty neat. It's not just dirt or bedrock. Some tar paper over there. I'm guessing they had this tarp up just to have less to heat up. Oh, and there's a bird's nest. I guess the door is never closed here if they're flying in and out. B 
Be sure to use filters when filling gas lamp. Well, I shall endeavor my best. Well, that's the prospector cabin. We came, we saw, oh, look at all this steel wire. Cool beans. All right. Enough gabbing and walking around. I really need to get a fire going here and get some tea going. So we'll check back in a sec. Okay, we just got our fire started. And there's our little experimental fire wall. I'm going to see if that'll bring the smoke and the heat up instead of my face. I give a shout out to my buddy Will. He gave me a bunch of those uh, UST wet fire things for Christmas, and I was like, "Well, I'll try it out." And you're supposed to shave them down and uh, hit them with a spark to get them going, and that works pretty good. I'm not going to do like a review on them; they just do exactly what they say they do. But you can actually—they come in a little package. Picture it like a like a candy or something on a strip, and you rip each one off that you need. But you can light them like those fireplace logs too. I just light the corner of the wrapper or the lighter or a match, and put it in the bottom, and away you go. So we'll get this going, processed up a bunch with the axe and some smaller stuff with the knife. We'll go clean our bird and get a stick to roast that on and then uh, we'll be back at her. Well, there's our bird on our fork stick. I'll save you the, uh, the details on how we do that. I do have videos on how to field dress grouse and ptarmigan, so you can look that up if you want to see how I did it. But interesting thing of that is it's the first bird or any wildlife actually that I've dressed out with this Bear Grylls knife that I want to make fun of it so bad, but it works. It's not a bushcraft knife, so and most survival knives aren't. Nothing's going to carve like a mora, but a mora, I've come to find out, is great for wood carving. Even then, you've got to look after it quite a bit for general survival work. It's not really the steel or the edge or the design for that. I'm not saying that this is the world's most awesome knife. But it does everything that it says it does and should do, so yeah. Well, I'm going to get uh, rig geared up for my pot and to put that over the fire and then I'll get back to you. So if you're going to do your meat over the fire anyways, and don't mind the, uh, that flavor that comes from burning this old softwood. Yeah, if you make your reflector wall out of snow, you can just jam your stick in cook her up. I'll probably send the outside here a bit and then move it back a little bit or up a little bit just to let it cook nice and slow through there. It's going to seal in all that minimal juice that they have. All right well now we got the makings of a nice cozy little fire. Got the bush pot full of snow to melt that down. Got my grouse roasting up there. I wish I brought my spices with me. A lot of times I'll have uh, different things but uh, there's one that Dave Canterbury recommended that I liked. Old Bay that's actually not too bad on wild meat. But even just salt and pepper half and half mixed together. Oh so good. But yeah the wall seems to be working good. All the smoke which is very little smoke honestly is going up there. I had one piece that I split out that was kind of punky so I put that on the bottom to insulate the fire from the rock. You don't need to do that but it sure does make your fire take off a lot quicker and easier and sustain itself. I got my pot stands just jammed in the snow. My spit. I'm gonna split another piece or two of wood here. And just enjoy myself and relax. It is just around 2.30. It gets dark. Well sun sets around 3.30 and I know how to get out of here. So this is the first time I've ever been on this lake. I am two lakes. Well two portages and one lake in from the, uh, the lake that we go camping in the tent at, so I know where I'm at, which is okay. I'm just west of there. Oh, that's cozy. Yeah, now we just relax. Enjoy our view here from our little fire pit. Dry some gear off, maybe. I might even bring over my uh, no fog mask and let that thaw out here. Well, you know what I should quickly uh, talk about here today? Today is January 2nd, 2019, so first off, happy belated new year, but better late than never. But it's my dad's birthday. 
This is old Dougie back in Nova Scotia. Happy uh, 87th birthday. I was chatting with my dad here this morning on the phone. He was worried about me being up here getting eaten by wolves and stuff. So I'm still alive. So hopefully uh, my brother shows you this. But yeah, 87. Still drives stick shifts. Still walks around all the time. Still gets in trouble with the ladies. So. Happy birthday, Dad. Well, as foretold by the weather forecasters, here comes the rain, or not rain, sorry, snow. Get my fire straightened out here. Just a little topsy-turvy on me here. You stay there, you go over there. that will be enough to finish up my tea. Just about done. Well, it's definitely pretty, but if you can at all help it, this is not the kind of weather to be traveling in. I'm hiding underneath these jack pines here and still getting snowed on a fair bit. I didn't want to get too wet with it, but... Yeah, that's why I didn't go somewhere I didn't know where I was going to be too far. But snow showers, if it comes in hard like this one, you can't even see hardly, what's that, 150 meters to those trees and then, yeah, there's a lake shore over there somewhere. But we're cozy and safe. Well, you know what's good? Spruce kebabs, that's what's good. Mmm. Yeah, get the light here. I just don't want them getting full of snow and getting cold. I'm gonna eat this before that happens. Finish eating it. Mm. So I thought this was gonna be burnt, but this is the absolute best spruce grouse that I have ever eaten. Let's see if I can get it off the stick here. Mmm. It is done just perfect. Ah, it's juicy and tender. Mm. I am going to get my coffee in me. And I'm going to make tracks. Because it's really coming down. If it doesn't let up, at least I'll still be able to hug the shore here. And have daylight. Until I hit the ice road. Then I can hit the trail. Then I can get to the portage that takes me back to town. And then I'm on Yellowknife Bay. So, until next time. Bon appetit, and we'll see you again here soon from the Northwest Territories. Happy New Year.